Hey, it's Hammer Time. Well, we have a very super special episode of Hammer Time uh, with the Senate President Karen Fan in her office. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> I love it. W welcome to the show. Thank you. You're a historical figure. You're the. You're only, I believe, the second female Senate President that this state has had in in our history. That is correct. There wasn't much time before you got thrown an incredibly important is issue, uh, the drought contingency plan. Uh, we had not had a major water bill. We had some different water bills passed, but n not a major one since 1980, the, the, the landmark ground uh, water management act. But I mean, we're talking within seconds of you taking office, you had a big responsibility on the drought contingency plan and you pulled it off in a masterful way. Can you talk a little bit about that? You give me too much credit, Lynn. Um, you deserve it. Actually, this was uh, a, a huge effort by many, many people. Actually, over the last five years, everybody does think that we just <laughs> pulled it off when it really had been a, a huge issue. It was just it came upon us much quicker, and that's why it did look like it was like fast. So um, kudos to everybody that served on those study committees all those times. It was It's a delicate issue. Uh, I was fortunate in the sense only because I've worked on water issues for about 30 years now, and so at least uh, water is so difficult, but if you know at least a little bit and understand the concept, it sure helps you deal with all those acronyms and everything else that goes along with it. And there's a lot of acronyms. Yeah. But, but how did you keep the, everyone sort of rowing together? I mean, it's, it's, in today's environment, there aren't that many examples in the federal level or in the state level where you basically get a vote uh, that's 99% across the House and the Senate. Again, it was credit due to a lot of other people and what little bit I did to help get it across the line is pretty much what I do with everything else is I tell everybody keep your eye on the ball. Do not get sidetracked or go down any other rabbit holes. Keep your eye on the goalpost and let's just keep moving it down there and I think that's why we were, we were able to get that there. And it's neat. We're at a point now where the it's in the it's in the hands of our federal delegation, and it, and it seems that the seven states that are part of the the lower and the upper basin are working well together too. Exactly, and to you know not to take anything away because we have an amazing governor and his staff has really worked hard to do this. So this was done under his leadership. Like the governor, you're a business person. You've been the, the, the CEO of a highway construction company. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? And I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna transition it into some of the infrastructure issues, but just your, your perspective as being uh, a leader in the state and, and, but someone who has such a strong uh, business background. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, you know, I think it's really exciting whenever anybody comes down here and runs for an office where they do have some sort of experience. So if you have a business background, you understand the dilemma that goes on with our businesses, uh, whether it's uh, employment shortages, whether it is workman's comp unemployment issues. Just moving our goods across the state is a huge issue for us. So. If you do have that background, you definitely understand the bigger picture of the economy in Arizona and what we need to do in improvement, which also takes us to that point of let's try and get rid of some of those silly regulations and just get out of the way and let people actually run their businesses. Well, dur during your tenure in the in the state house and the state senate, I mean, you've supported every major uh, bill that's been out there or l has led the charge on every major bill that's improved this business environment. So when you take a look at the where the state of Arizona is in terms of our job growth, uh, how, how does it just make you feel? It's good. It's, it's good being a part of the team. I mean, you know, you're giving me a lot more credit, but gosh, Glenn, the things that you and the chambers do are just amazing. And, and all the other colleagues I work with here, it truly is a good team effort that everybody just works together and we make these things happen. No, my, my strategy is basically, I just ride on the coattails of our state <laughs> legislature and our governor. And I'll tell you, have, working with my colleagues from across the country, uh, the state chamber leaders, there's not a single one that feels sorry for me being in Arizona. Well, that's good. Particularly in March. <laughs> that's good. Talking about infrastructure, that is an issue that we hear a lot about. And I'll, and I'll say when I get outside of the great state of Maricopa County, I, I hear a lot more about the needs that we need to do more in terms of our infrastructure and our roads. Mm -hmm. 
How should we be approaching that issue? Well, we are so far behind the, the ball on this one, the eight ball, because we are like well over a billion dollars behind of just taking care of our existing roads. This isn't even money to expand and create new lane miles. So because we're growing, we are a growing prosperous state and people are moving here. And you can see what's going on on the 10. You can see what's going on. Everybody just trying to move to and from work, much less our goods. So we have to do something about funding uh, our, our infrastructure. We have not had a raise in gas tax since 1990. And I'm certainly not one that wants to jump out and propose to raise taxes, but we are we are spending less now in, in proportion on our highway infrastructure than we were 20 years ago because we're not even keeping up with the cost of living, the cost of raises and fuel and products. And the U.S. Chamber has been very aggressive on the federal level saying we need to raise the, the gas tax for, for the reason it hasn't been raised and, and also just the transition. And I'm part of the problem. I drive around in a in a, in a hybrid, it's nice, but I'm using the roads every bit as much and paying less, and that right. doesn't seem right either. And that needs to be addressed as well. And, you know, it, it, the number one thing here is remember, this is safety. This is where mom, dad, the kids, grandma and grandpa, these, are on, these people are on the roads every single day. And the more congested they get and the less uh, that they are fixed, uh, we have a bridge just north of Chino Valley that literally had holes in it, and you could look down to the canyon below. That's how far behind we are on that stuff. So yes, we need to fix that problem. And, and we are hearing more and more from em employers all across the state that, that we need to do something. So that, that's going to be an issue that we're really uh, going to uh, dig, dig uh, a lot more into. Just curious, you're also former mayor. Mm -hmm. Differences between being a mayor and the Senate president and serving in the legislature. You know, it's really fun. Everybody said uh, it, it, the difference is, is, for one, if you're a mayor, the best part of the mayor is you're closest to the people. So it is just awesome to be able to just absolutely know pretty much everybody that's out there in your chambers. And you really are taking care of that kind of stuff. The difference, though, is that on a local level, you're taking care of things like zoning and not in my backyard, and you take care of your, your police and your fire issues and those kind of things. When you come up to a state level, you still are addressing some of them, but now it's on a whole different level. You're dealing the whole state, and you can't just think about your municipality anymore. You need to think about the entire state and how whatever your actions do or don't do, how that's going to affect every municipality and the state as a whole. But it, but it seems that it's a great experience to it's have. It's great. I love my job. I really uh, do. I'm asking this to someone who spends too much time in the state of Maricopa County and who came here from another country called New York. <laughs> I, and I, but I love traveling. I love, I just love going around the state. What's a hidden gem in, in Prescott? First of all, I grew up in Prescott, so <laughs> that's that's where um, every, there's a lot of good memories and stories there. But hidden gems, um, we have, of course, we have some really great microbreweries up there, and some uh, we, that whole industry is going nuts. We do have uh, Fort Whipple. We have the Charlotte Hall Museum. We have the Arizona Pioneers Home. So we have a lot of really good gems. But come up for. Arizona's Christmas City in, this, in the wintertime. It is just amazing. Everybody loves it. And then, of course, 4th of July, world's oldest rodeo. Another uh, great time. You know, I, I will say, I've been there the 4th of July. It is magical. I will say I was on a former senator's ranch once uh -huh. and was riding a horse called Cinnamon. And that was rough. <laughs> I found it really tough. <laughs> Probably so not so much. <laughs> so I have, I have a lot of work to do. Senate President Karen Fant, thank you for serving the state with great honor and distinction. And we look forward to continuing to work with you throughout this session and, and beyond. Great. Thank you, Glenn. I appreciate that. Thank you.